Are you recording? Okay. We're ready. All right. Good morning, everyone. And uh, shall I say broadly, welcome to the second day of the YouTube conference. Welcome to the third plenary session, considering last night as a one and closed session in two different parts. Uh, I have the pleasure to introduce you to two uh, speakers who are going to be with us for the next hour. Uh, the two speakers are Professor Mike Telwold from the University of Wolverhampton and Dr. Farida Lees from uh, the University of Sheffield. And uh, it's a particular pleasure for me to, to uh, introduce them as um, I am a fan of their work too, which always helps. And uh, especially because I think, and this is, this is a broad reflection, of course, but uh, I think that uh, their work, either together or as, as single individual researchers, uh, has helped in getting a way uh, to understand uh, digital media and digital platforms and the way in which uh, we can use certain methods to understand them uh, and how users use the platform too. So uh, before, uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll hand over to Mike first, who is the uh, first one of the two. They are going to talk about for about 20 minutes each. Uh, Mike, just to uh, recap a little bit, Mike leads the Statistical Cybernetric, Cybermetrics Research Group at the University of Wolverhampton and has developed and evaluated free software and methods for systematically gathering and analyzing web and social web data, including sentiment analysis, alt metrics, web metrics, and many more. Uh, his presentation is entitled YouTube Comments, Three Studies, so and Some Software Instructions. So, uh, Mike, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. You won't be clapping at the end. <laughs> I hope you don't um, look at these, uh, look at the title and think, oh my god, software instructions, how grim is this talk going to be? So, anyway, in 20 minutes we'll see. So, I thought, about, I thought I'd talk about uh, three studies, just briefly summarize the results of three studies analyzing YouTube, and then uh, explain how to use Webmetric Analyst to gather. YouTube comments and YouTube video information. So this at the end, just maybe five minutes at the end, just to, in case you need to gather information about a lot of YouTube videos or you want to download all the comments, it's just a very simple tool to help you automate um, a job that you might know you're going to have to do, but it's really boring to keep copying and pasting from YouTube. Okay, so three studies. Study number one. So this is um, half a decade old now, data, um, but it includes analysis of data from YouTube that they don't give anymore. So I'd love to do a, a replication study on this to see how YouTube has changed over time, but um, they, uh, they don't give all the information um, that they used to anymore. So some of the information in this, uh, uh, some of the results of this study are, um, we can only guess how they've changed over time. So the first studies are basically very simple questions, like all my studies really. They ask very simple questions, there's nothing really profound. Um, just get the information and ask simple questions about an aspect of YouTube. And this is really the simplest questions you can ask. Um, who's posting to YouTube? Um, what are they posting? How are they posting and why? Just simple questions. And I'm only looking for answers that you can get by um, what's already on YouTube just looking at the content on YouTube and not um, asking people, not going and asking people, no interviews or questionnaires. So I love reading other people's studies, interviews and questionnaires, but um, for this study, it's just the, the data in YouTube, the YouTube, uh, what's actually in there. 
So, uh, just in case you haven't seen YouTube before, <laughs> <laughs> it's my favourite video. It's fantastic. <coughs> and um, I'm looking particularly at the comments on videos. So, I love the comments because they're, as you know, they're just a simple way of getting a little bit of audience feedback on a video for free with almost no effort at all. Um, in a way that if you didn't use a social media, you would spend ages interviewing people, finding the people in the right location. So for the data for study number one, so it's web metric analyst, and um, it's based on um, 39,392 videos with one or more comments. So we developed uh, like a keyword method of trying to get a, something that's like a random sample of YouTube comments. It's, it's not really possible without talking to YouTube to get a complete random sample, but this is something close to a random sample of YouTube comments, and we're interested in um, the properties of these comments. One comment per video. So for each comment we got from YouTube, and this was from the, um, the data that YouTube, YouTube supplies, or used to supply for free, um, to computer programs. So if you haven't used the YouTube API applications programming interface, it's a, it's a way in which YouTube automatically gives data to computer programs, including researchers' computer programs like Webmetric Analyst. Um, and it, uh, it used to give you more information than you could see on the YouTube website. So it used to tell you the age, gender and location of, of all the members and all the commenters um, on YouTube. Um, and they don't give that anymore. I think a few years ago they, they shut that down, presumably for privacy reasons. So when they told us people's ages, <laughs> then uh, this is, uh, these are the results. <laughs> I, reckon, <laughs> I reckon the typical user is a bit older now, but this is really a young demographic. So the 20 year olds are uh, the mobile age. But loads of young users, these are the people leaving comments, not necessarily the viewers. The viewers are probably older, but the people that bother to leave a comment on a video tend to be pretty young. The oldest you could be, I think it was 100 and, 109 for some reason, so anyway. <laughs> there were spikes at 30, 40, and 109. These are our ages. But it's important to know that the people that leave the comments are young. It's a very young demographic. And the length of the comments, they're typically pretty short. So m most comments, the vast majority of comments, are just really short, like not even a, even a sentence, like a, a long phrase or a, a short to medium phrase. Um, so you do see paragraphs of text in YouTube. You can have up to 500 characters in your uh, comments in YouTube, but these are very rare, so the typical comments are which is very, very short. And the sentiment in comments I'm particularly interested in. So we use a computer program, uh, SentiStrength, which automatically detects the strength of positivity and the strength of negativity in social media texts. And um, th this is a the, this is a horrible graph, but I can't find a better way of presenting it, sorry. But the, the graph is essentially saying that the typical comment in YouTube is mildly positive and doesn't contain any negativity. So typically, positivity is the dominant sentiment in, in YouTube, which, unless you study politics, I'm, I'm pretty sure is your own um, impression of YouTube. People are nice in YouTube. People say nice things about the videos, typically and um, to the video uploader, in most contexts, not all, but in most contexts. But a very strong, very emotional, very powerful, strong, positive or negative sentiment is almost non-existent, so it's like some mildly, moderately positive, typical communication. Uh, and if someone leaves a comment, then they typically either say something positive, or something negative, or no sentiment at all, but they don't tend to mix sentiment. So if you're used to looking at film reviews, that's the opposite. So a film review typically mixes positive and negative sentiment. I like this, I didn't like that. The acting was good, the plot was bad. 
So it's rare to get a film review that says everything was awful or everything was wonderful. Okay, it happens, but uh, more typically it's more balanced. But in YouTube, people do tend to be polar. It was good, it was bad. Say something positive, say something negative, say something negative. Um, but interestingly, the comments with the most neg the videos with the most negative comments also tended to have the most comments. So if there was a video that was unusual in that it elicited uh, negative reactions, then people would react more to it. So, uh, and this was really evident on the music videos. So if, if you look at old music videos, old rock videos, and you look at the comments, they'd all say, I love this, this is a great song. I remember when I danced to this in the disco in the late 60s. Um, and there's no interaction. There's no one else that says, that replies to say, well, I also love this. I also danced to this in the, in the disco in the late 60s. Or oh, well, it's very rare. So um, it's actually the negativity that's formed the reaction. So if you, want to, if you want to make friends on YouTube, then if you post, I don't like this, then you're more likely to get other people replying so, saying, well, actually, it's excellent. <laughs> or contradicting you. So there's a correlation with um, the amount of people, the amount of comments on a video and uh, the negative sentiment expressed in comments. Uh, this is another horrible graph, I'm sorry, so probably don't bother reading the technical details, but the, the green <coughs> bar, a high green bar, means that in this category, it's a really controversial category where there are lots of discussions. Sorry, other way around. Green bar, very passive category, no discussion. So music, the very, very few heated debates in music videos. Whereas in politics, that's absolutely the norm. News and politics, it's absolutely the norm to discuss things. But these bars are related to the, um, the percentage of comments that are replies to previous comments in YouTube. So in a passive category, no one interacts with any other, anyone else's comments. No one replies to anyone else's comments, like music, um, like uh, comedy, like um, entertainment, but uh, in the active categories where there's a lot of discussion, then if you post a reply, you're more likely to they post a comment, you're more likely to get a reply to it. So this is news and politics is obvious. Science and technology may be a bit of a surprise. This is uh, something that people like to discuss on YouTube, not just leave a comment, but actually like to discuss it. And um, just a final little bit of background information. So about one in a thousand views on YouTube on the videos we looked at generates a comment. So commenters are really, comments are really a really tiny, tiny percentage of the, the views on a video. So you certainly can't say that the commenters are likely to be representative of the viewers of a video. Such a tiny percentage, they must be highly selected. And that's probably partly the reason for the very young average age of the commenters in, in the early graphs. Um, about a quarter of the commenters replies, and not one of the categories, but um, religion was a topic that generated the most heated and the biggest discussions. So this just came from looking at their data. So the, the, music, the one music video, oh no, that's not right, no. The, many of the politics and, uh, and uh, some of the science videos with heavy discuss discussions uh, were about religion. So they're in um, the uh, science or the news category, but the discussion was about religion. So religion was really controversial. So the one controversial music video was um, there's a huge discussion on whether black metal was the same as death metal, or whether it's a subgenre. <laughs> <laughs> okay, study two, just quickly on this one. So. Um, why do academics cite YouTube videos is the question for this study, or, or how, how many academics cite YouTube videos? So when you write a paper, you might, in your, in your research, you might um, include references to the main people in your field, or the papers that have informed your um, work, but you might also cite a, a YouTube video that you've looked at. But most people don't study YouTube but a lot of people still cite a YouTube video for something or other. And uh, so here's an example of, there's an academic journal 
how widely this known this is, but there, there are academic journals now where you don't submit a paper, you submit a video, and your publication is the video. So the Journal of uh, Visual Experiments is uh, such a, uh, a journal, it's a reputable, good quality academic journal, and you submit a video of your experiment, uh, uh, and a short paper describing the experiment, but the heart of what you're submitting is a video, and the video has to describe some kind of complex experiment where it's much easier to demonstrate it in a video format than it is to describe it in a textual format. So I'll add this example. This is a still from the video, so you can see it looks like a high quality, um, carefully constructed video. So, um, and this is the, the number of publications, academic journal articles, that cite YouTube videos. Um, and the different subject areas that they come from. So YouTube is particularly cited in the social sciences and science and arts and humanities and less in medical and health sciences. But um, I had a look at uh, earlier this week at who writes the most papers on YouTube and it seems to be the medical and health sciences write the most papers on YouTube. But their papers are typically of the format um, asking the question um, how accurate is the information on disease X in YouTube? So how, how accurate is the information on diabetes in YouTube? And there are loads and loads and loads of papers like that written by health researchers. Okay, so study three, um, tech talks in YouTube. So um, I'm sure you know about the TED Talks uh, website, so it's a uh, live presentations, video recorded, Farid has been in one. Um, and um, the main audience is really the online audience for TED Talks, although it's a, a live event, and they're carefully curated, high quality um, talks given by academics and non-academics. So the talk typically um, involves explaining some academic arts education topic with maybe demonstrations or uh, nice graphics, nice visuals with it, and they're uh, hugely, hugely popular, over a billion views in total for um, uh, the TED video. So for something that's related to academia, it's uh, maybe the most popular thing we have on the internet that, uh, okay, it's not 100% academic, but um, it's academic -y. So we looked at the, the statistics, the, the data on uh, the 1,000 uh, plus about 1,300 TED Talks videos in the TED Director channel. And we did a little bit of extra manual work. So we wanted to know what academics are doing in TED Talks and what does TED 